All right, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the problem 9 to the power of 900 minus 9 to the power of 901. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by evaluating my terms. So we have 9 to the power of 900 and 9 to the power of 901. And these two terms are pretty similar, except that the exponent for 9 to the power of 900 is 1 less than the exponent for 9 to the power of 901. So the easiest way to solve this <clears throat> is to simplify this as much as we can. And a way to do that is to factor out a term. Well, 9 to the power of 900 is actually a factor of 9 to the power of 901. So all we have to do is rewrite 9 to the power of 901 as something times 9 to the power of 900. Well, we can use property of, properties of exponents to do this. So I'm actually going to rewrite 9 to the power of 901 as 9 to the power of 900 plus 1. And now I can use the exponential property a to the power of m plus n is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So I get 9 to the power of 900 minus 9 to the power of 900 times 9 to the power of 1. So now from here, these two terms have the number 9 to the power of 900 in them. So I'm going to factor out 9 to the power of 900, which is what I said I was going to do at the beginning of the video. So now I get 9 to the power of 900 times 1 minus 9 to the power of 1. And this is equal to 9 to the power of 900 times 1 minus 9, because 9 to the power of 1 is the same thing as 9. Now, 1 minus 9 is equal to negative 8, so I get 9 to the power of 900 times negative 8. <clears throat> now, from here, I said I was going to simplify this as much as possible, and we can't really get the exact value, because 9 to the power of 900 is such a big number that we can't actually get the exact value for that. However, what we can get is the simplified value, and we're going to simplify it as much as possible. So I'm actually going to move this negative sign to the front, so I get negative 9 to the power of 900 times 8, and this gets me negative 3 squared to the power of 900 times 2 to the power of 3. We're simplifying these terms as much as possible. So I'm going to use a quick exponential property. I say that a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m times n on 3 to the power of 2 to the power of 900. So I get negative 3 to the power of 1800 times 2 to the power of 3. So this is my final solution to this equation. Now, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and even show this to any of your friends and family. That would support me a lot. I have a bunch of other videos similar to these on my channel. And if you're up for any challenges, I have a bunch of those. So please make sure to check them out. And thank you for watching. Bye. All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation x to the power of x to the power of 8 is equal to 2. So I'm going to first start by taking the power of 8 on both sides. So I get x to the power of x to the power of 8 to the power of 8 is equal to 2 to the power of 8. And now I'm going to switch the places of these two. So I get x to the power of 8 to the power of x to the power of 8 is equal to 2 to the power of 8. Now I can rewrite 2 to the power of 8 as 2 to the power of 4 times 2. <clears throat> and if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So this turns into x to the power of 8 to the power of x to the power of 8 is equal to 2 squared to the power of 4 meaning x to the power of 8 to the power of x to the power of 8 is equal to 4 to the power of 4, 
And because it's in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So x to the power of a is equal to 4. And if I take the eighth root on both sides, I get x is equal to the eighth root of 4. All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation 8 to the power of x is equal to 32. So to solve this, I'm going to start by taking the log on both sides. So I get log of 8 to the power of x is equal to log of 32. And now if I have something in the form log of a to the power of b, I can move this x1 and b to the front of the logarithm. So this is turned into b times log a. So log a to the power of b is equal to b times log a. So now in the case of log 8 to the power of x, we can think of x as b, so we can move x to the front of the logarithm. So I get x times log of 8 is equal to log of 32. Now, from here, I'm going to divide both sides by log 8 because we want to isolate x because that's what we're trying to find the value of. So now these two cancel out. And I get x is equal to log of 32 over log of 8. Now, log of 32 is the same thing as log of 8 times 4. So I get log of 8 times 4 over log of 32. And if I have something in the form log of a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. So in this case, this is going to equal log of 8 plus log of 4. And I have this over log of 32. Sorry, I have this over log of 8. Now, this turns into log 8 over log 8 plus log 4 over log 8. So now these two cancel out to get 1. So I get x is equal to 1 plus log of... 4 over log of 8. Now, log of 4 is the same thing as log of 2 squared. And log of 8 is the same thing as log of 2 to the power of 3. So now if I have something in the form log of a to the power of b, again, I can move b to the front, so to b times log a. So that's exactly what I'm going to do with both of these. So I get x is equal to 1 plus, I can move the 2 to the front. So <clears throat> 2 times log 2 over the same thing with 3, so 3 times log 2. So now these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to 1 plus 2 over 3, which is equal to 1 is the same thing as 3 over 3, so 3 over 3 plus 2 over 3, which is 5 over 3. So x is 5 over 3. Now, how do we know that this is the right answer? So, going back, we have a to the power of x equals 32. And we're plugging in 5 over 3. So we get 8 to the power of 5 over 3 is equal to 32. Now, if you already know, 8 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3.
So I get 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 5 over 3 is equal to 33 is the same thing. 32 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 5. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So these two threes cancel out, and I get 2 to the power of 5 is equal to 2 to the power of 5, or this is the same thing as 32 is equal to 32. This is right. Now, I also have a second method of solving this problem. So for the second method, we have the same equation, a to the power of x is equal to 32. And this is a simpler method. So for this method, I'm actually just going to start by rewriting these two numbers. So 8, I'm going to rewrite as 2 to the power of 3. And 32, I'm going to rewrite as 2 to the power of 5. So I'm rewriting both of these as these same bases, which now it makes it much easier to solve. 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3x which is equal to 2 to the power of 5. And because these two have the same bases, a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, meaning m is equal to n. So 3x is equal to 5, and x is equal to 5 over 3. So that's another method of solving this equation. Now, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and share this to any of your friends or family. Thank you. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the problem three to the power of 13 minus three. So to solve this, I'm gonna first start by rewriting this as three to the power of 12 plus one minus three. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So I get 3 to the power of 12 times 3 to the power of 1 minus 3. And from here, I can factor out 3. So I get 3 times 3 to the power of 12 minus 1. Now 3 to the power of 12, I'm going to rewrite as 3 to the power of 6 times 2. And that's equal to 3 times 3 to the power of 6 to the power of 2 minus 1 squared. And I'm writing this like this because now I can use the property a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So this turns into 3 times 729 plus 1 times 729 minus 1. This is equal to 730 times 728 So from here, I'm gonna rewrite this as 700 plus 30 times 700 plus 28. So this is equal to three times 700 squared plus 700 times 28 plus 30 times 700 plus 28 times 30. Now this is equal to 3 times 490,000 plus 40,600 plus 840, which is equal to 3 times 531,440, which is equal to 1,594,320. So this is my answer.